Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric, thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up squad? So, welcome to your readings for September 2018, yeah? Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to all the new subscribers, but thank you to all the returning subscribers. Uh, your support is everything to me. I really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, we just recently hit 10,000, and I'm super, super happy. I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you to all you guys. You are freaking amazeballs, yeah? <laughs> so, uh, just a few things. One, this is a general reading, so please take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Um, and the energies are interchangeable, okay? So it could be you that we're talking about. It could be the other person that we're talking about, if we're talking about another person. Um, these aren't necessarily love readings, but love definitely comes out because I am channeling for the Venus sign. Your Venus sign is uh, how you approach love, how your information about that. So if you are looking for information about like, your love life, I would recommend, me personally, I recommend that you always start with your Venus sign. You can find that out um, if you pull you know uh, pull up your birth chart yeah drop your birth chart now about birth charts um, I want to make a little bit of a uh, bit of a suggestion um, this might be a bit of a long intro if people want to leave a timestamp go right ahead um, but I do recommend that you guys listen to the intro at least once especially if you're watching like a bunch of different signs um, just listen to the intro at least once and then like do whatever um, but uh, I recently got into Vedic Astrology, which is uh, also known as Sidereal, I believe. Um, and uh, I did this because my spiritual team, my spiritual guides really pushed it for me to start investigating. And I did so. And I learned that my signs are different. Okay, So I always thought of, uh, I grew up as a Taurus. My sun sign was Taurus. But then when I did the Eastern chart, the Vedic chart, um, sidereal chart, I learned that my son is actually in Aries. And when, <laughs> when I learned about that and, and I really like investigated and I read it and I like felt it out, it, it immediately clicked. Like it felt right. I was like, Oh, Oh man. Because when I started to look back on like how I present myself, how I like how I work in the world and everything like that, um, I am very much an Aries. <laughs> So that makes sense. I still kind of resonate with Taurus, but um, very much in Aries. So then other than that, you know, in, in the Western chart, um, my moon sign was Leo and my rising sign is Venus. I'm sorry, rising sign is Venus. No, my rising sign is Virgo and my Venus is in Aries. But then in the Eastern chart, my moon sign is Cancer, my rising sign is Leo, and then my Venus is in Pisces. And when I looked at all that uh, that stuff too, I was like, oh my God, that makes so much more sense. Because when it came to the Western chart, I was like, how am I so intuitive, but I don't have, I barely have any water in my chart. I think in the Western chart, I think I have like one planet in Scorpio. Um, and it might, I think it might be Neptune or something. I don't know. But then when it came to the Eastern chart, there was all the water I was missing, right? So for me personally, things really clicked and I understood, I came to a better understanding of myself. So the reason why I'm sharing this with you guys is I encourage you to check that out. Um, you can watch my videos or any of the videos, whether you, whether you resonate more with Western or Eastern astrology, it really doesn't matter. It's just um, all about how you feel how this connects with you, how it resonates with you, okay? Um, so I'm, I put uh, some links to some websites to, that are, I find are to be really, really great um, in giving you your chart. Um, actually, there's one, there's one that actually will give you both, but I'll give you two, two different options. Um, they're going to be in this description box below, and uh, I encourage you guys to, you know, insert your um, your birth data, your birth information, and check it out. See what comes out, and if you resonate with something, go for it, and then start to watch the videos from that point of view. Like if now, if you all of a sudden you find that things are different when it comes to the Eastern chart, and you want, and you kind of resonate with it already, and you want to watch videos uh, in line with that, I encourage you to do so. You know, it's really all about what you resonate with, how, what you feel about the situation. Yeah. Okay. With that said, um, I'll, a few more things. One, you can find me in New York City at Om Shanti Bookshop. 
every Monday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Om Shanti is located on 14th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue in the East Village of Manhattan. So come check me out if you're in the area. I would love to meet you guys in person. Um, the, uh, the link to the website uh, for Om Shanti Bookshop is in the description box below. So you can go to the website, get their phone number, give them a call. If you want to schedule a reading beforehand, you're more than welcome to do so. Or at the same time, walk-ins are definitely welcome. Um, and it's a great shop, you know, they've got all kinds of really nice stuff. The crystal selection is fantastic. So if you're into crystals, I recommend coming down and checking us out. We have a lot of great stuff there. Um, you can get some crystals wrapped and put into jewelry for you at the shop. Um, if you do want some crystal wrapping, ask for Martha. She's great at that. Um, what else? Oh, I am available for private readings. Uh, my email address is in the description box below, along with a description of all the readings that I offer, all in the description box. If you would like a personal reading with me, just go down into the description box, look at the options, read through them, see which one might, may work well for you, and then throw shoot me an email. If you don't know which reading would be best for you, go ahead and email me, and we'll chat, and I'll help you decide which one you would like, yeah? Okay, so for the readings this month, um, I'm using the Golden Universal Tarot. I love this deck, guys. I love it. It's just so pretty. And then I am closing out the readings with Oracle Guidance from my favorite, Oracle of the Unicorns. Yeah, I love unicorns. I personally believe that I am a unicorn, but you know what? That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> All right, guys. I guess that's it. Thank you for sticking in to with the with the long intro with me. If you did, if you didn't, don't worry about it. It's fine. You can't even hear this part of the message anyway. <laughs> I love you guys. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Let's get to it. Hi, Aries. Welcome to your reading for the for September <laughs> for the month of September, twenty eighteen. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's get right into it, shall we? Okay. <laughs> Hi Spirit, please make me a clear channel for all Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages for Aries to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of September 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Aries, so for you already, I'm hearing Capricorn. You may have Capricorn in your chart. Um, you may be dealing with a Capricorn. You may be connecting with a Capricorn. You might want to check out the Capricorn reading for this month. Um, I'm hearing there's someone around you that is a Capricorn that could be leading you astray. <laughs> I heard probably is. Definitely is. <laughs> okay, whatever that means. Um, so you might want to check in on that. I don't know, look into that, whoever that's for. That is a pretty specific message, so it's not going to be for everybody. Um, but if that resonates with you, look deeper into it, is what I just heard. Okay? Aries. I'm seeing a lot of orange for you. Um, I feel like I'm hearing there's a, a lot of emotional activity right now. Um, you could be putting your emotions in check. We are in, uh, we are in Virgo season, so you might be trying to, you know, <laughs> cattle call. I heard. I'm hearing like I'm hearing like some like rain, uh, cattle. Like you know how you like rain all the, like the cattle in or whatever, or like the sheep or something like that. I feel like your emotions might be pretty scattered right now, and you some of you might be working on just reining it in a little bit. Okay. Again, that's another specific message. It's not going to be for everybody. So if it resonates with you, take it. If it doesn't, leave it. <laughs> Aries. Aries, 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 Aries. Yes. Aries. All right, cool. One more shuffle for you, Aries. And then we will get started. Yeah, okay, so I'm also seeing red, and so that's the root chakra, so you really could be try working on grounding yourself right now, or maintaining your grounding. All right, Aries, let's get into it. Starting off, boop, there you are, wham, 
the king of wands, upright. Booyah. So, you're passionate about something. This could be why you're trying to rein in your emotions a little bit because you're feeling really driven towards something and you're really passionate about it. You really want to move forward. You're taking action, okay? What I'm seeing with this, when I look at this King of Wands, I, I look at him as he, he looks like he has his eye on the prize and he's working on how to get there, okay? That's the energy I'm feeling from this right now. King of Wands, all right, Four of Cups, Okay, Page of Pentacles in reverse, and the Six of Swords. So, here's what I'm getting. Um, you're, you're a very passionate and driven person. Uh, there was, there's some sort of missed opportunity, I feel like, some sort of unrequited love. You may have, you may have rejected someone or someone may have rejected you. There was an offer that was not given here or did not come through with the Page of Pentacles or maybe a message that did not come through with the Page of Pentacles. And so now either you or someone else is moving on with the Six of Swords. Okay. Okay. This could also be a depiction of the Divine Masculine with the, with the King of Wands here. And it's funny because when I looked at the... When I just looked at the screen a few seconds ago, I said I saw 414, which is another depiction of like 144. So we could be talking Twin Flames here. There could be an energy of the Divine Masculine rejected, the Divine Feminine potentially, or just um, it could be it could be that the Divine Masculine in this situation um, is really just not moving forward, not taking this cup or uh, really contemplating whether or not they want to move forward with an offer. Yeah. Conversely, you could be embodying the masculine energy now. Ah, yeah, okay. You could be embodying the masculine energy right now and really not taking any offers from people and moving on to safer, calmer waters for the sake of your own well-being. That's not bad, Aries. <laughs> I can dig it. Let's get into the energies of the month now. Uh, the first half of the month, first set of current energies we have. Oh, also, I just wanna, I just wanna say, you could be also dealing with a, um, another fire sign, uh, Leo, Sagittarius, or another Aries, okay? First set of current energies for the first half of the month. You have the world. Completion. Ending of a cycle. The world is upright here. I like that so far. The world is coupled with... Woohoo! The Emperor. In reverse. There could be a completion of a cycle with um, someone who embodies this emperor energy in reverse. This emperor energy, the emperor in reverse is very, is really narcissistic, manipulative, um, immature in ways, controlling, really only after their own satisfaction, I want to say. But there's some sort of uh, of of uh, completion ending. This could be an ending of um, these 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 traits of the uh, the emperor in reverse within you or within someone else, or this just could be the cycle, the ending of a cycle with someone that is embodying that is currently or still embodying has been embodying these energies here. Okay. Okay. Second set of current energies for you, Aries, we have the Two of Swords in reverse. There's an energy of being indecisive. Um, I'm hearing of being unsure, of not clear, of kind of blindfolding yourself, yourself to the reality of the situation. But see, that's being released now. Two of Swords in reverse is coupled with the Four of Pentacles in reverse, finally letting something go. And that makes perfect sense here because we've got the world, which is, which is an ending, Boop. So far, this feels really good for you, Aries. Very, very good. 
Also, the emperor is a depiction of, is like the official depiction of the divine masculine. So you very much can, could be ending a cycle with a divine masculine or with your divine masculine that is just reversed. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, okay. Current challenge for the first half of the month. You got the seven of pentacles. Understanding. Uh, I'm hearing reaping what you've sown. Understanding how what what you're getting back from this. The current challenge could be taking the time to really understand what has happened in this cycle that's going on right now. Or that it's ending. I'm sorry. Seven of Pentacles is coupled with... Okay. The Two of Cups in reverse. I'm literally hearing understanding why this has happened. Why this, why this situation didn't turn out the way you wanted it to. The cycle is ending. That's what I'm hearing. And that really is a good thing. Potential outcome for the first half of the month. You have the Queen of Cups in reverse. Okay. Uh, could be dealing with a water sign. Cancer Leo. Oh, sorry. Cancer of Pisces, Scorpio. You could have water in your chart. Okay, the Queen of Cups in reverse is coupled with the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. So the potential outcome for the first half of the month here could be someone being all up in their emotions because they're stuck being single. This could be you, Aries. It also could be the person that you are, this cycle is ending with. Yeah, I'm really, I'm just picking up an energy of someone being really all up in their emotions because now they feel like they, they, they have this feeling that they might be single for the rest of their lives. They may have put themselves in such a, a, a position where, like, they'll just be perpetually single. Hmm. I'm also hearing independence lost. That could be a reason why... Independence lost. At the same time, it could be, because I'm also now getting um, too independent. And that's really like throwing your emotions all over the place. Could, yeah, I mean, this is a general reading, guys. Second half of the month, upcoming energies. We've got <laughs> Eight of Cups. Walking away, leaving this behind, in search of something better, in search of something greater, more fulfilling. Hello, look at this. The Eight of Cups here. This person is walking away from all these Eight Cups, potentially going to look for the Two of Cups. That will complete the Ten. Hmm. Eight of Cups is coupled with the Ten of Pentacles. Look at that. So it's not the Ten of Cups, but it is the Ten of Pentacles. So you could be, someone could be walking away from a situation that's no longer emotionally fulfilling and walking towards something that will bring them this Ten of Pentacles, this, this family that they're looking for, this family life that they're looking for, the ultimate material existence that they're looking for. Why? Because obviously it wasn't working out here with this cycle that's ending. And so might as well move on. Second set of upcoming energies for the second half of the month, you have the moon. But you see, I'm getting a distinct feeling that what you might be walking away from may not be exactly what it seems. The moon is coupled with the star. 
Okay. Wow. That's interesting. So with this, I'm getting an energy of it. it things are just not as they seem. And actually, there's a lot of healing happening. And I'm getting that there's a lot of healing happening in terms of this energy of someone walking away. It, and them walking away is really not what it seems. Someone could be walking away in order to work on their finances work on their career, that's entirely possible. Um, I'm hearing, with, especially with the moon and the star here, I'm hearing, listen to your intuition. Let it be your guide. Because it might be pretty dark around you in this part of the month or whatever. So the upcoming challenge for the second half of the month Okay, would be Eight of Wands in reverse. Blockage, lack of communication, not communicating, not being able to communicate, just needing to not communicate also could be the challenge, even though you may want to. Eight of Wands in reverse is coupled with, ha ha, the fool, but the fool is upright. Embarking on a new journey, starting a new, starting a new. I mean, look, you've got the world here, and now in your upcoming challenge for the next for the next half of the month, you've got the next card, which would be right back in the beginning, which would be the next cycle with the fool. But that's the challenge here. Not having the communication that you may desire, but taking a leap of faith. Maybe even feeling like you can't communicate, but still needing to take a leap of faith in some way. It's looking like... So far, I mean, I have to get the final, the, uh, the potential outcome for the last part of the month, but it's looking like this is going to be a very heavy month. Energetically, like it's going to be a very big month. Because you've got a lot of major arcana here. You've got the world, the emperor, the moon, the star, and the fool so far. So for the uh, potential outcome for the second half of the month, you have the knight of wands. This could be your energy, Aries. Could be another fire sign. I'm picking up distinctly Sagittarius type energy for the second half of the month. Someone could be rushing in real quick. It could potentially be. This person that was represented by the emperor. Now, hold on. I can't believe I did this. But this is your card here, Aries, the emperor. So not only are you showing up as the king of wands, but you're also showing up in your reading here. But you are reversed. So either this is someone else's cycle ending, or it could be your cycle that's ending. Within you, like these tendencies within you. Overly controlling, maybe. Okay, but back to um, the Knight of Wands here. This could be someone coming rushing in. It could be this person that is represented by the, the, the Emperor, if it's not you. It could be the Divine Masculine in this situation. The Knight of Wands is coupled with, ooh, Death in Reverse. Maybe a Scorpio. So someone could be coming to rush in after a major transfer, after they exit a major transformation. And I really feel like, and this is exactly what I was picking up here in the beginning of this second half of the month, it could be this, uh, whoever like walks away or something, whoever moves away from the situation could inspire or spark some sort of change in the other person and they go through their own transformation and then come rushing in. Hmm. Okay. Well, that sure is interesting. I can't believe I I can't believe I missed that. The emperor is you, Aries. That's your card. Now, of course, it doesn't have to necessarily symbolize you in the context of this reading. It could also be the other person. Like I said, these are general readings, so the energies can go back and forth. The energies are interchangeable. 
well, like I said in the past, but this is, sorry, this is a general energy, uh, reading, so the energies are interchangeable. Huh. Well, that's really interesting. My attention keeps coming back to the Seven of Pentacles here with the Two of Cups, as in the current challenge for the first half of the month. That challenge is understanding why, and I said this before, but I just want to say it again. The challenge is really understanding why this relationship hasn't worked out. Why this relationship, why people are at odds with each other. And really to understand it fully, you have to be able to take some sort of responsibility for your actions. Okay, it's not all just one-sided here. Okay. And then also for the second half of the month, the upcoming challenge, the Eight of Wands, lack of communication, not communicating, this also could be someone not uh, being challenged with feeling like they can't communicate because the other person that they want to communicate with is like fancy free. Literally is free from any sort of karma, I want to say. And so the person that may want to communicate to them may feel like they can't because they have too much baggage. Mm. But it looks like that baggage may be cleared up over some sort of process here over the month because we have death in reverse. And I, I, to me, I just heard the cycle is ending. So to me, it's like someone's coming out of a transformation and moving forward. All right? Cool. So let's get into the Oracle guidance for the month for you, Aries, from the unicorns. Spirit, please bring forward the best messages for you for Aries for the September 2018 from the unicorns in relation to this reading here. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right. Aries. Best messages, please, Spirit, for Aries. There we go. Got it. What have we got here? Possibility. Wow. Raise your standards. Elevate your expectations. You have unlimited potential. So to me, this is saying that there is a possibility for things to, re to really work out in your favor here. Especially if you if someone is walking away. Walking away, walking away, excuse me, walking away really could be the best thing for the situation right now. Because then that takes, it removes your energy from it. So then that frees up the energy for things to shift and change. When you remove your energy from the situation, you really could be freeing up space for the cycle to really come to an end. Okay. So there it is, Aries. Thank you so much for tuning in. I wish you guys all the best, uh, much love to you all, and I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of October. Yeah, take care. Mwah. Bye.